Welcome classic rock fans to one of my 10 of the best and today we're looking at the 10 best Marillion songs or more specifically the 10 best Marillion songs of the Hogarth era. If you're new to this channel please do click like, subscribe and do check that notification bell and check some of the links below this video for ways you can support the sterling work done at Classic Album Review, it's always much appreciated. And do stick around to the end of the video for a few honourable mentions. Number 10 is the uninvited guest from the wonderful Seasons End album. I really love the idea behind this song that there's, that we're all effectively haunted by the darker aspects of our character. All those misdeeds and indiscretions that can come back to haunt us. There's a real Jekyll and Hyde vibe to it. And this is always, uh, whenever it's performed live, it's always performed brilliantly, I must say. I love the allusions made to the 13th at the table and Banquo's ghost all played out against that menacing tattoo of drums. Interestingly, it was written by John Helmo, who said it was inspired by the AIDS epidemic. I'm not hearing that when I listen to this song, but nevertheless, it's all about uh, the need to keep something hidden, something hidden from ourselves. Absolutely glorious number. Number nine is Out of This World from the wonderful Afraid of Sunlight album. This is a profoundly moving tribute to Donald Campbell. Uh, an album that uh, is essentially a meditation on, on fame, if you will. The version of this number performed on the Blu-ray, Out of Season, is definitely worth checking out. It's absolutely sublime. As well as When I Meet God uh, is also a fantastic version on that, that video. Not to be confused with the Adam and the Ants, the, the Day I Met God. This song has a subtext for me, and that is uh, essentially a song about obsession and the rabid pursuit of something. Interesting, Donald Campbell writing in his diary said of his wife that uh, he was sick of his wife badgering him about safety. The song, um, I think, was inspired by or, or inspired the salvaging of the Bluebird from Lake Coniston, where, um, and also the consuming of uh, lots of uh, uh, Kendall mint cake as well. And it was also, the song was rendered beautifully at uh, Donald Campbell's memorial service by Steve Hogarth and Steve Rothery. In many ways, this uh, reminds me of the song Brooklyn's by Big Big Train, a song about another driven man, if you will, that is the life of John Cobb. Number eight is El Dorado from Fear. The coming storm is a beautiful motif here that's uh, so effective as the world events of the time push their way through Europe. Hogarth assumes a, a kind of wryly ironic tone as he uh, describes the English walled garden critiquing uh, the idea of isolationism. With some ominous keyboard tones by Kelly, this album is incredibly atmospheric and drifting, and a lot of that is uh, thanks to the wonderful work done on this record by Mark Kelly, as well as uh, rather soaring guitar work, which is both anguished and transcendent. There is a much better balance between message and music on this album, as Hogarth employs this uh, Socratic uh, questioning as he kind of points at certain things that we should be aware of, wryly and ironically observing. Uh, certainly much better than the new album, which comes across as a little bit too uh, didactic, if you like. I mean, we tire of um, Hogarth's, the, the incessant wag of Hogarth's finger as we listen to it. Number seven is Afraid of Sunlight, the title track from that very album. As I said, this is a, a gorgeous album, a meditation on fame. Uh, or, if you like, the very destructive nature of. On this um, thematic, if not concept, at least a thematic album, I think, the idea and the image of Afraid of Sunlight is rather compelling. Uh, Christ, of course, tells um, a St. Peter, or who would be St. Peter, that you will deny me three times before the cock crows. Now, cocks usually crow at sunrise or if they snag their bollocks on a bar by fence, but usually at sunrise. And then you get the great line in this song, all your spirit rack abuses come to haunt you back by day. The reference to spirit rack is, is absolutely genius, uh, as being a row of optics, but also conjuring images of something to be endured. And on this album we get uh, interesting little songs about uh, that touch upon the lives of, of those sacrificial lambs, the Kurt Cobain's Amy Winehouse, Elvis, all these faces emerge from the sonic canvas of this song and album, as well as, of course, uh, including the aforementioned wonderful tribute to Donald Campbell. Number six is Fantastic Place from the Marbles album, which many hail as uh, uh, Marillion's finest album. 
at the very centre of this song seems to be a, a, a desire just to be elsewhere, a kind of yearning. It has an effortless quality to it. I wonder how the writing of this song was. Brian Wilson said the when writing God Only Knows It, it just came to me as, as easy as melted butter. I wonder if that was Hogarth's experience with this one. It certainly um, feels very languid. I love the way it just starts as this low murmur punctuated by the very delicate playing of Mark Kelly and uh, little nice little guitar phrases by Steve Rothery. Marbles is an album that I think tends to fluctuate from the skillfully understated to the vast and panoramic in one fell sweep, or the oceanic, I should say, beautifully employing light and shade from the menace of Invisible Man to the lightness of touch in terms of the title track to that sense of being utterly defeated as well at times on this record. To this one, of course, which, as I've said, just seems to um, yearn uh, for just, just to be elsewhere. Number five is Estonia, which I believe is from This Strange Engine. This one was inspired by Hogarth hearing a survivor's story, uh, a story about the sinking of the Estonia in the Baltic Sea, taking over 800 lives. Beautiful refrain in this song, no one leaves you when they live in your heart and mind. A refrain that's come to mean a lot to me as I go through my life, losing loved ones as we do. Of course, that eminent philosopher Rocky Balboa said that the older I get, the more I've got to leave behind. But of course, the events of this are slightly different, I think, but they're it's so sensitively done as it beautifully encapsulates that sense of panic, uh, you know, in those final moments. Lyrics like, uh, no, not this way, not this way, not this way. There's wonderful use of repetition. And you would give anything, give up everything, offer your lifeblood away for yesterday. Anything just not to be in that moment. There's no doubt that uh, Hogarth is a talented lyricist, but also the way he skillfully uses his voice. I don't know if you can use the term dy uh, dynamic range when we talk about singers, but certainly the way his voice um, fluctuates from that barely audible whisper to that barbaric yop. It's, it's just so theatrical and suits this music beautifully. Number four is Ocean Cloud from the Marbles album. This is an epic number, and when it is performed live, it's just absolutely magnificent. Ocean Cloud is a musical odyssey that very much uh, depicts an actual odyssey, that undertaken by Don Allum across the ocean. And quite rightly, it's a number of epic proportions, uh, oceanic proportions, one might say. Of course, Don Allum is the first person to row both ways across the Atlantic Ocean. But this song focuses primarily upon that third crossing from Newfoundland to Ireland in 1987. This song beautifully uh, explores that, that sense of existential yearning and peril that this man must have uh, been in, uh, revealed in the textures of the music, which are just so powerful. It's a skillful rendering or bringing to life the psyche of a man who's about to enter the maelstrom. And we get the sense that maelstrom is not just... Uh, literal here but metaphorical as well. Lots of wonderful texturing here with the sound of seagulls and waves as the music beautifully explores the vulnerability of the man. Vulnerability that is juxtaposed with the sheer majesty of the number itself. I love the first line of this song, he's seen too much of life and there's no going back. And the fact that the line just hangs there gives it added weight for us to um, ponder on the, the vastness of it all. Number three is Neverland, of course, from the Marbles album. This is an iconic Marillion number that usually ends their sets these days. I see it as a song that has a, a kind of disappointment or loss of innocence at the very centre of it. That point we all reach in life and that uh, we're hit by that dreadful realisation that the age of innocence is over and the only thing that awaits us is um, disappointment, despair and eventual death. I love the line in this song, I just want to be someone uh, who someone would want to be. It seems to me that um, escape is a motif on this album, and this song is no different to a certain extent. You know, uh, about the process of escape, the desire to escape, and of course the possibility of. Neverland is an interesting reference, of course we all uh, know Neverland from Peter Pan. Uh, of course, you know, if you remember the Lost Boys, the Lost Boys kind of escaped the adult world, the messy and sticky world of adulthood by effectively never growing up, yet nevertheless understanding that there was something not quite right. As I said, this is a haunting number, and a number that usually ends the Marillion set. 
Well, this song and a shitload of confetti. Number two is Care from the latest album. Care explores notions of mortality, and it was certainly inspired by the pandemic, of course. All juxtaposed with the, the album's title, this idea that time is indeed running out. Even before the pandemic, time was running out for us all anyway. I love the way this track starts with that swampy bass with Peter Travis channeling his inner Sly and the Family Stone before we get that soaring and cinematic lead from Steve Rothery. The best part of the song is about four minutes in when it sort of quietens down and we get this atmospheric sea of sounds like a clock chiming which is I think created by Steve Rothery's guitar. And there's no doubt on this song, indeed on this album, that there are breathtaking moments of sonic contrast. Interestingly, the final part uh, of this track was actually inspired by a mural by uh, Paul Barber. It was based on a photograph taken during the early stages of the pandemic. But the enormity of this number is it's absolutely majestic listen, it really is. It's almost a, I think I described it using loads and loads of hyperbole, almost a transcendent experience. I love the line in this song that an angel came and carried me home. This idea of uh, salvation during some very dark times. The album Fear drew upon the um, analogy of the approaching storm as the as a humanitarian crisis. With this album, there's a sense of battening down the hatches, but nevertheless, being aware that uh, tomorrow there may indeed be some blue skies. Number one for me, the greatest of Marillion tracks is The New Kings from uh, Fear, of course. This one bristles with rage at the injustices of the world with that angelic light motif of uh, fuck everyone and run. It just chimes out like a choir. There's no doubt that this album seized the zeitgeist, even unintentionally. You know, in an ever-shifting world politically and ideologically, when certainly the, um, the orthodoxy that was neoliberalism was beginning to crumble, or certainly being questioned. Of course, you had the rise of Trump and the Brexit debate. Not that this album is concerned with any of those things as such, but it just came out at that right, perfect moment. Of course, Leavers and Remainers is about bands moving on and very much about the itinerant lifestyle that they lead. But nevertheless, the vernacular used certainly, uh, certainly hit home at the time. I love the line in this song, do you remember a time when you felt that you mattered? This is something that strikes me quite deeply, really. I do remember a time when you felt that you did matter, that your parents mattered, their sacrifices mattered. And now it seems all very strange, really. We've never been so connected, yet never been so disconnected. And the dynamic range of the music on this track is fantastic. And I love the way Hogarth uses his voice from that, you know, hushed, sardonic mewing to that barbaric and indignant yop. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Anyway, as I promised, at the end I would include a few honourable mentions in terms of Marillion songs that I really love that just didn't quite make my list. One of them would be The King of Sunset Town from Season's End. The other would be Power from The Sounds That Can't Be Made. I'm also a big fan of that epic autobiographical number that is This Strange Engine. Anyway, you've been watching a video by Classic Album Review, the 10 best Marillion songs of the Hogarth era. To what extent do you agree with these? Please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Do click like, subscribe, and check that notification bell, all that usual stuff. And other than that, I just hope that you're safe and well and that you keep listening.